Okay, so today we're going to talk about the independent sample t-test. And so for this lecture, we're going to conceptualize and calculate an independent sample t-test. So throughout this lecture, what we're going to do is define independent samples t-test and what it's used for, uh, hypothesize, compute, and apply that information. So first, let's conceptualize an independent samples t-test. So what do we, under what conditions do we use an independent samples t-test? Well, it's very similar to the related samples t-test in that it compares two means. However, in the related samples t-test, you're comparing two means from the same sample, right? So you can have the same sample of pre and post people, so people who were maybe par, part of an experiment, say a weight loss program, or you can pair those individuals, right, based on some characteristics such as GPA. An independent samples t-test, on the other hand, compares two means of different or independent samples. So we're comparing, instead of comparing apples to apples, independent samples t-test compares apples to oranges. So we have experimental versus control groups, for example, men versus women, dogs versus cats, wine versus champagne. All, right? All of these different things are sort of apples to oranges. Um, as opposed to the related samples, which were sort of comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges. <clears throat> With the independent samples t-test, we're using two variables, right? We're using an independent variable, which is a categorical variable. So this can be either nominal or ordinal. And this can only be two categories, right? So we can be looking at maybe upperclassmen versus lowerclassmen. Um, we could look, be looking at cats versus dogs, again, wine versus champagne. Um, just note that these are, the independent variable in this case is categorical, and we're wanting, we're interested in understanding whether these categories significantly change something on a dependent variable. And on the dependent variable, it's going to be a continuous, either interval or ratio type of variable. And so for dogs versus cats, right, we can measure the number of birds eaten per day. Or uh, we can look at the number of bottles of uh, wine or champagne sold in stores and look at the averages of those and see if there's a significant difference between those, right? So we're looking at a continuous uh, either interval or ratio type of variable for the dependent. So let's do a quick conceptualization with an example. So the weight loss program, HinnyMag, was interested in knowing if their program was effective. To test this, they randomly selected 10 out of 20 program applicants to participate in their five-week program. The other 10 were not admitted. HinnyMag then compared the weight, loss, the weight lost by their 10 participants over the five weeks to those 10 applicants who were not admitted to the program. So we have program participants, which are sort of the experimental group in this case. And we have non-participants, which would be considered sort of the control group, right? So we have two different populations in this, or two different samples in this case. And what this does is it compares the mean of these two different samples, right? It's comparing the mean of, um, of weight loss against program participants versus program non-participants. So again, just like the other t-tests, we're still comparing the difference between the two means, right? We're, we're comparing the difference between two means within two groups. So in this case, we have a population of people, then we have a, a sort of subsample of potential HennyMake clients, and then we break those up into two different samples of participants versus non-participants, and we're comparing the average weight of participants versus non-participants. Let's give you one more example. The International Wine Federation, IWF, wants to know whether people tend to purchase more wine or champagne. To test this, they count the number of wine and champagne purchases across a week in a local Trader Joe's store. They compare the average number of wine and champagne purchases for each day uh, of, of each, both wine and champagne, and compare the average sales per day. And so again, this is comparing the mean of two different samples, samples of wine, samples of champagne. And we're, again, we're still comparing the difference of number of bottles sold per day, right? So how many bottles of wine are sold per day versus how many bottles of champagne are sold per day. 
and we're comparing the averages of those two, um, those two sales, the, the, the sales of wine versus the sales of champagne. So here we have the population of wine versus the population of champagne. We take samples of those from Trader Joe's stores, and then we're comparing the purchases of each of those, right? And we're asking the question, is there significantly different purchase numbers between wine and champagne in these Trader Joe's stores? So again, just to reiterate, the conceptualization, the, the, the reason we use independent samples t-test is to compare two means from different samples. Now let's apply this. So let's use uh, my students as an example. So Professor Collins wants to know whether IAS students final grades and statistics is significantly different than STEM students' final grades. So what we should do in this case is we should extract relevant numerical data, right? By extracting the numerical data, we can have something set that will allow us go th to go through our calculations. It'll sort of make the process a little bit easier. So what do we want to extract? Well, first we want to extract sample size, right? So we have a sample size of 14 for IAS students and a sample size of 11 for STEM students. We also want to want to extract mean scores, right? Mean grades. So the, the average grade for IAS students is 3.52, whereas the average grade for STEM students is 3.21. And we also need to extract the standard deviations of each group, right? So we have standard deviation of IAS students at 0.31, the standard deviation of STEM students at 0.22. And so we'll consider IAS students as group 1, we'll consider STEM students as group 2. And what we'll do is we'll bring these numbers with us throughout this whole process so that we can just simply plug them in where they need to go. And by plugging them in, by, bring, by extracting them from this, from this scenario and bringing them with us throughout the, the calculation, this will sort of uh, assist us in creating our calculations. Um, so first we need to figure out, and, and a, another thing that we need to extract here is to understand whether it's directional or not. So by saying something like significantly different, we're identifying a non-directional hypothesis, right? We're just saying they're different. We're not saying whether we think one is greater than the other, whether um, whether one is less than the other, we're, we're simply stating that we think that one is different than another, and we're not saying in which way. So this would identify a two-tailed test, right? So this two-tailed test will help us state our Nolan research hypothesis, which is step one in calculating, um, in calculating independent samples t-test. And so this is effectively the same thing as a single and related samples t-test, right? So in this case, our null hypothesis is that IS students' grades and stats are not significantly different from STEM students. Uh, our research hypothesis is that, is that IAS students' grades are, significant, are significantly different than STEM students. So in the research hypothesis, we're saying they're not equal, right? The mean of group 1 and the mean of group 2 is not equal. Um, so that's effectively what we're, what we're saying in research hypothesis, and that's what we're testing. So step two, we need to now define the critical region. And this is defined by degrees of freedom. Right? So the formula for this is slightly different than the related samples and single samples t-test. So because we have two independent groups here, right, two, uh, two different samples, uh, what we need to do is account for both of those groups. Because in related samples, we only have, you know, it's, it's one population. Um, and the sample size for each sort of group in those populations are going to be identical. Independent samples, on the other hand, can be different. They can vary. So group one doesn't have to have the same sample size as group two. So in this case, when we look at this equation, the n of group one is our IAS students, and the n of group two is the sample size for our STEM students, right? So what we do is we use appendix B to identify one or two-tailed critical values. Um, for this problem, we're going, again, we're going to use the two-tailed because our hypotheses are non-directional. So as I mentioned, we're going to bring our data with us, right? So 
in this first step, or, or in, in step two for defining the critical region, all we're going to be using is the sample size for both of our groups. So our degrees of freedom is calculated by um, the n of group one minus one plus the n of group two minus one. So uh, n of group one, group one is the sample size of group one, as I mentioned. N of group two is the sample size of group two, so our STEM students. And so what we do is we pull out this calculation here. And we get our 14 from our sample size of, N, of IAS students. We get our 11 from our sample size of STEM students. And we come up with a degrees of freedom using this calculation of 23. And so I'll give you a moment to look in your book and try to find the two-tailed critical region for, an, uh, for a degrees of freedom of 23. And what we find is a critical region of 2.0687. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare a test statistic or a T statistic to this critical region. So step three here is computing our test st statistic. So we're going to add to our, um, to our extracted values here. We're going to add to this as we move through the process so that we bring each of these pieces with us. So first what we need to do is compute the observed deviation between the means. And what that is is uh, the mean of group one minus the mean of group two. So I have my mean for IAS students put here my mean of STEM students put here, and the difference between those two are, is, is going to equal 0.31. Now we need to continue, right? Um, so in this process, we need to compute our sampling error, or our, our standard error of the mean. And for this, we're going to use these two pieces of information here that have been extracted, our sample size and our standard deviation for the two groups. And so this looks like a very complex calculation, um, but I'll walk you through it step by step. So hopefully you can follow, follow along as I do this. So our SD um, squared sub P is the squared deviation scores for the two samples, right? So it's the standard deviation, uh, squared deviation um, for the two samples, and this P is to represent the two samples, right, or the population. SD2 sub 1 is the standard deviation squared for group 1. So our standard deviation squared for IAS. Our SD squared sub 2 is our standard deviation squared for group 2. Um, and our denominator in this equation is the degrees of freedom, right? So you remember this equation from earlier, and we have our degrees of freedom here. So when we put this calculation together, we need to start plugging in these components. So first, we want to plug in our n, right? So we have our n in two places. So our, our calculation here, let me step back a minute. Our calculation for this is in the numerator, we have the sample size of group 1 minus 1 times the standard deviation squared for group 1 plus the sample size of group 2 minus 1 times the standard deviation squared of group two, uh, all divided by the degrees of freedom. So we can plug in our numbers here, right? So we start by plugging in our n's. So we can plug in our n here and our n here, both the, the numerator and denominator. Then we can plug our n in for group two and our numerator and denominator. Then we can plug in our standard deviations. Right, so our standard deviation squared for group one goes here. Standard deviation for group two goes here. And after we calculate that, which I'll give you uh, a minute to calculate, or actually um, you can pause this and go ahead and calculate. And what we find is a um, standard deviation for the two sample score of 0 0.075. Now that was a lot of work, um, but so to not lose this, we need to bring this information with us, okay? So we're going to bring this with us in the next step because the step three, computing the test statistic, takes several steps. So now we bring our standard deviation of the 
uh, of the two groups with us, so our 0 0.075. And we're going to use this to compare, compute our next step, um, which is the, the sampling error, the standard error of the mean, right? So there's several steps in computing this. And the standard error of the mean in this little sub-I stands for independent, right? So in, it's, it's referring to the independent samples t-test. And so our calculation here is um, we're utilizing our ins, our sample size, and we're using our standard deviation of the two groups. And so the calculation here is the square root of the standard deviation of the two groups divided by the sample size for group one, plus the standard deviation of the two groups divided by the sample size of two, group two. Now it's really important when you're calculating something like this to get um, your order of operations correct, right? So, um, so look up order of operations if you're a little rusty in um, your algebra, uh, because that can really affect how this is calculated. So what we do is we can plug in our numbers, right? So we have our sample sizes, we plug those in there. And then we have our standard deviation of the two groups. We plug that in there. And we come up with a total of the standard error of the mean for independence of 0.111. Um, now just to note, I just noticed that this is rounded a little funky. Um, so this should be rounded to 0 0.076 and not um, or excuse me, 0 0.075 and not 0 0.077. So be sure to plug this number in here and not the number that's showing. And you come up with an SEMI of 0 0.111. And that's plugging in this number up here and not this number here. So now we need to compute the test statistic. So we have our, um, so what we'll use in this is our two means, and we'll also use our standard error of the mean uh, for the independent samples t-test. And so we need to compute the test statistic for the independent samples t-test, not the single sample t-test. So the calculation for that is you have your t equals um, the deviation between the means, or the difference between the means, so mean 1 minus mean 2, all divided by the standard error of the mean. And when we plug in our information, so we plug in our, um, our means for each group, then we plug in our standard error for the mean, and I'll give you a second to calculate that, um, so you may want to put it on pause. And what we get is a t-statistic of 0 0.280. So what we need to do is compare that to, to the critical region of 0 0.2067 um, to, to, to identify whether or not um, our, res our, our null hypothesis, uh, we rejected it or we accepted it, right? And so we find that 0 0.280 is greater than 0 0.20687, which is our critical region and we can reject our null hypothesis because our t-statistic is greater than um, our critical region. So now we need to compute our effect size. So the two pieces of information that we've pulled with us that we're going to take, that we're going to use for this is our means and our standard deviation of the two groups. Um, so we're going to use Cohen's D here, which is the observed difference between the means um, divided by the square root of the standard deviation of the means. So again, it's divided by the square root of the standard deviation squared of the means. Uh, or excuse me, the standard deviation of the two groups. And so our Cohen's D has this calculation here, this formula. So again, you've seen this, right? The deviation between the two means, or the difference between the two means, divided by the standard deviation of the two groups, square, or the square root of the standard deviation for the two groups. We can plug in our data, so we plug in our means for each group. We plug in our standard deviation between the means, or between the two groups here. And we come up with our Cohen's D. So please pause this um, if you want to calculate it yourself. And what we find is a Cohen's D of 1.129. And so the Cohen's D, again, gives us our effect size. So this is telling us essentially how large of an effect this is, how how big 
this effect is between these two groups. And so we've, what we find is a very large effect. Um, because the d value is greater than 0.08, right? So now that we have all of this information, we have our Cohen's d, we have our t statistic, um, we have our degrees of freedom, we have all of this stuff, and we know we, we have now rejected the null hypothesis, right, because our test statistic was greater than our critical region, what we need to do is we need to write up a result section. So if somebody who hasn't done this can understand what, what we're saying here. So what we want to do is interpret our results. So what I would write for something like this is the average final grade for IAS students, and so you have their information here, um, on a four-point scale in statistics is significantly different compared to um, STEM students, right? And you have their information here, final grades. And what you want to do is you want to add in this small piece of information. So we want to add in our degrees of freedom. We want to add in our critical region, right? And this is saying that the probability of the scores being significantly different given chance is less than 5%. And so that's why we put this here. This has to do with the critical region. If our critical region, or excuse me, if our t-statistic, essentially if we've rejected our null hypothesis, we're going to put this number here, right? Um, then we have our t-statistic, and we have our Cohen's d. So each of these things, each of these um, components need to be entered when you're interpreting your results. So what we've effectively done here is we've looked at the population of STEM students versus the population of IAS students, and we've take a, taken a sample of each of those within the classroom, and we've compared their means based on their stats grades. And what we found is that IAS students and STEM students' grades are significantly different, right? We didn't indicate a certain direction. We know the direction because the means, we have the means here, right? Um, but we didn't indicate that in the hypothesis. We just wanted to know if they're different. So throughout this, you should understand the reason you would use an independent sam samples t-test, and then you should understand how to create the hypotheses, compute, and apply the information given in this lecture.